We're going to start by setting up our viewport. I'm going to split it into two views. So in the viewport layout, I'm going to select two views side by side or control two. And we're going to make one of them our perspective and the other one is going to be our UV viewport. You can access it either by selecting the uh, drop down and going to set view and UV viewport, or you can click on five on your keyboard and it will bring you the traditional zero to one UV space. I'm going to drop down a geometry node and I'm going to call it UV demo and jump inside and create a box. So we're going to start with the basics and we'll go from there. So if you look, we currently don't have anything showing in our UVs. Some other packages like Maya or 3D Max will create a default uh, UV set for your meshes, but Houdini starts with a blank slate effectively. So we have to go and create our own. Um, one of the things I'd like you to do as well is if you, once you have your UVs and you want to visualize them in your viewport, um, is to enable that, so press D on your keyboard and that's going to bring the display options. Make sure that your UV is set to all views. I think by default is set to UV view only. So change it to all views. You can save it as the default so that way every time you open it, it will always be set like that. Now the tools that we're going to be using to unwrap the UVs, um, there's quite a few of them in Houdini, but the one we're going to start with is called UV flatten. So press tab and type UV flatten, drop that node and connect it. Now, when you click on it, you're going to see that your viewport has turned completely white and basically all the, the whole mesh is taking over that whole space. We have a bunch of options in here, uh, the group, UV attribute, the flattening method, there's two of them, there's spectral and there's angle based. They each have slightly different uh, algorithms to unwrap the UVs, but uh, we're going to just start with the basics right now. So with the UV flatten selected, go to your viewport and press enter. As soon as you do that, you're going to see that um, your box is now showing this really weird pattern. Um, there's a selection around your UV. And more importantly, you're going to see that there is a bunch of tools on the very top. So the first one is to cut the seams. And the second one is to sew the seams. You can pin them. Uh, this one is to align vertices in either the U or V direction. And this one is to rectify groups of quads. Also really important is this repack option. I'll show you how that works. So when you work with UVs, um, it's basically like imagine pieces of cloth that you're sewing together or cutting them and then reconfiguring them in the way that you want. So it's important that you understand depending on what your object looks like to get the best UV layout that, that you can. So what we're going to do for this box is we're going to turn it into kind of a standard T shape. So making sure that your icon is set to cut seams. By the way, if you right click, you have the options in here and each one of them has its own shortcut. So cut seams is uh, shift one or exclamation mark. So, so back seams is uh, the ampersand, sorry, the at sign, which is shift two. So you can use those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by clicking and creating the cuts. So every time that you click on an edge, it's going to set a cut and you can see how that works in the UVs. Okay, so remember we have a big white shape in here and now it's being cut into the shapes that we want. So I'm just going to follow the contours like so. And you can see that in real time, it's actually updating. So I'm gonna go to the other side, put one here, put one here. And if you look at it, you can see the shape that I've cut. So basically all the edges that go around like so, and that gives us the T shape. So once you're done, before you press enter, just click on repack 
and that's going to take that shape and put it inside of the UV space and then you can press escape and you'll see our UV is now properly cut and placed inside the shape itself. So one additional tool that um, Houdini has that can help you visualize where your UVs are, uh, how they're laid out is the UV quick shade. So if you press tab and type UV quick shade, and connect that it will drop a grid a checkerboard grid on your object and ideally the UVs that you want should look like this where there's no stretching at any place and all the squares are nice and even and they're all laid out properly Let's use a shape that's a little bit more complex. I'm going to use a torus in this case. And I'm going to drop the uh, UV flatten. Just here, I'm gonna connect it. Now, by default, when we put it together, it looks like a flat donut, but uh, as you can see, it's not the actual ideal shape that we want. So I'm going to cut it by running an edge all across the center. Now, if you want to run all across the edge loop, you can press Shift A and middle click, and that's going to run the edge loop around that part. I'm going to also looking through the center of the axis, I'm going to cut it also along the um, x-axis over here. So again, shift A, middle click, and I'm gonna do the same for the other side, shift A, middle click. And finally, you can see here the shape is getting to look slightly better than it did before. And then I'm gonna go to the inside of the torus and find the middle, which should be right around here, shift A, middle click, and there we go. So we basically quartered our torus. And again, if you remember, press repack, and now you can see that you have an equidistant, equal part uh, cuts in your torus. When you're done, press escape, and there we go. Now again, I'm gonna drop down the UV quick shade. And we can see what that looks like. And it looks pretty good. I mean, there's some um, weird connections between the squares in here, but overall, all of them are equal in size, which is ideally what you want. The next part that you would do once you cut your UVs would be to set some kind of layout that will match how you're going to design it. Now, again, this might not be the ideal uh, way for you to cut your shapes. So one thing that you could do is technically uh, sew them together. So let's say if you only want the top and the bottom, as we did before, you can go to the UV flatten. And again, if you press enter, you go in. Now, let's say that you want to sew these uh, cuts along the x-axis so you can re-enable the sewing seams with this icon or again if you recall you right click and you press the at sign and using shift a middle click it runs that through and shift a middle click it runs it again so now we have two equal halves and that could be maybe the ideal UV cuts that you want. You press escape and there you go. Now, I forgot to press repack in this case. So once I go in here, press enter. And if you click on uh, repack again, it will properly align your uh, shapes in the best uh, algorithm it can find and so they're not overlapping each other or uh, intersecting in any case you press escape and you're out and there we go
So this is one method of using UV flatten to actually cut the shape that you want into something that's a little bit uh, more custom to your needs. There's another tool that uh, you might find interesting that's called UV project. And what UV project is very similar to the tools that you find in Maya and 3D Max that usually come by default when you set UVs. I'll show you what it does. So UV project. and connect the torus to it. Now, when you run this tool, as you can see in here, by default, it's going to try and fit it um, to the orthographic projection, which is basically through the camera and whatever view you have at the moment, which in our case is not ideal. Um, one thing that you can do is click on this drop down, and it gives you additional options so for example the torus is a toroidal shape so if you click on it and press enter in your viewport you can see a projection that has the shape of that donut now if you look at the uv editor itself over here you can see that it's fitting but maybe not ideally to the actual shape so there's an interesting button that you can use if you look over here where it says initialize, you can click on it and then you can set it to either the best plane, which is the default, or change to X, Y, Y, Z, or Z, X plane. So I'm just going to leave it as is and click on initialize. Look what happens to the shape itself. It goes and fills your shape and completely wraps it up. So that's another method of using, if you have a shape that's uh, based to one of the primitives, then you can use this UV project to um, automatically uh, try to find the best UV uh, layout for it. So once you're done, again, you press escape and there you go. So I'm going to connect the UV project to the UV quick shade and you can see it here. Now, because this is around a shape that has circular and has deformations you might notice that the outside is a little bit more stretched than the inside but it's fitting across the shape itself a tool that you can use to edit the uvs themselves is uv edit and in some other packages you can do that automatically within the uv editor but in houdini you have to add that as a specific node so click on tab and then type uv edit and i'm going to drop that between the uv project and the uv quick shade so what uv edit allows you to do is modify your uvs in the zero to one UV space. So you enable it. Actually, I'm going to put the display on the UV quick shade so you can see it. But you select the tool and then if you press S to go into selection mode, you can now select the UVs themselves. So you can, I'm currently in primitive mode. So I'm going to double click and I'm selecting all of the primitives of my Taurus and now using my translate my translate rotate or scale so using TR and E as my shortcuts I can modify the sizing and position of my UVs so you can see with scaling enabled I can squash my UVs vertically or squish them horizontally and I can try and adjust the overall shape of the UVs across my torus over here and try to get it to fit according to the needs and requirements of my setup. Now, it might not always work because, again, the shape of the torus does have a bulging on the outside. So do take that into consideration when you're doing this. But again, using UV edit will allow you to um, edit your UVs manually. So I'm going to press escape, get out of the tool. Um, there's another tool that is 
used as part of the side effects labs and you might also find that useful maybe for even more complicated shapes um, so if you have side effects labs loaded um, if you don't have it in here just make sure to click on the update tool set to load the latest version one tool that exists is the labs auto uv it's currently in beta but i think all the tools are going to be in beta for the next foreseeable future so if you click on that and drop it into your network what it will try and do is automatically unwrap your uvs now one thing i didn't notice is that it doesn't show you the cuts on the shape itself but it does give you a whole bunch of uh, tools that you can play around with so for example uh, if you look at the method there's shortest path cluster uv unwrap and auto seam so each one of those is a slightly different algorithm to um, do the unwrapping but uh, for example if you play around with the grain tolerance you can see that it will try and find the best option for you so I'm just playing with the values in here and you can see that it tries to use all kinds of different configuration you have a merge threshold that will also allow you to get all kinds of various shapes with it so this is not an exact science tool, but it will try and do the best for you. There's a really good demo on the side effects lab that shows you how to take a complex model and run it through. And it does save a lot of time because it tries to figure out the best way to break your UVs. So it's quite useful. Again, it's not a foolproof method and it still has um, a lot of tweaking that you need to do but for the most part it um, does help at least get some of the basic parts in place and then from there you can go and edit them on your own later